Hello, Donna Cato here. Welcome to my studio. Welcome to my channel and welcome to class. Now today's class is simple. It's a very simple ring. It's this guy. Now here's the original one. I really like it a lot. It looks like a, some kind of pod. So I thought, oh, I'll make something. I want it to look like, you know, poppy pod. If you've ever seen poppy pods after they're dried out, they're kind of whitish, but they look like they have an undertone of blue and lavender. Well, I decided I would try, but silly me, I made something that looks like a garlic clove. Yeah, it does. It looks like a garlic clove. I still like it, though. <laughs> okay, so that's what we're going to make in this class. But the important thing of this class is not necessarily just the pod piece on top. But it's the ease with which you can make rings using just rubber cord. Okay? I make a lot of rings. Most of them are all clay. Or sometimes I put stainless steel bands inside and wrap them. But if you've got cord and you have some glue and you have some drills, you can make rings out of a lot of stuff. Beads. If you have any flat discs. I mean, I have... <laughs> bags of these that I could turn into rings quite simply. Now, I don't go into a lot of detail about this in class, but uh, I think that once you know how to do this, I do offer a brief explanation, which will make it perfectly possible for you to make these. Yeah. So I think it's time to start class. Let's get started. So let's look at this ring. I, I really like it a lot, it, the little potty ring. But if you look closely, you can see that there's a Skinner blend underneath and then I carved through black, right? And this is what the Skinner blend looked like. It's the same cane I used for the flower earrings, remember? I just did that class, same cane. So I don't want to do the same thing using the same cane. So we are going to make our Skinner Blend Bullseye, all right? Now I went cruising through the colors in my clay color box. I have a ton of this. I have this. These are so, these are colors that I don't use, um, that I'm not personally drawn to. But I know a lot of you are. We tend to fall into like the warm color school or the cool color, whatever. Anyway, so I tend to like warm colors, the reds, the oranges, the yellows, the warm greens, that kind of thing. And, um, but I'm going to use these. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to condition them. Well, condition, roll them out into sheets. I'm going to skin or blend these two colors. Okay. Mm, I love this thing. All right. So let me prepare the sheets. I will be back. Here are my two sheets and they have been rolled through the thickest setting of the pasta machine. I'm going to make just a traditional Skinner blend, which starts like this. Oops, fur. Fur. Okay. Da, da, da. Two right angle triangles. Doink, doink, doink. Like this. Now find the right angle. I know, you know. Right there. Okay. Now I'm going to set it up. I'm going to make my Skinner blend. You guys need any refreshers on Skinner blends? There are free tutorials right here on this very channel for you to watch. Yeah. Trust me. I put them up. Okay. Oops. So let me make this one. And you know what? I'll put a link in. How's that? But if you don't know how to do this, you might want to go to the basics playlist anyway and take a look. All right. So here is the Skinner blended sheet. You know, I'm going to fold this in half like so. 
just like that. Now I'm gonna put this edge on the rollers, my pasta machine, and I'm gonna roll through. I'm set on setting zero, which is the thickest on my machine. So I wanna make a nice long Skinner blend strip where one color is here, the other color is here, and every time I roll through, this strip is getting longer. And the separation between this and this, this and this, becomes longer. Okay, so let's roll this through setting number two. Okay, it didn't make it very much longer. Let's hit four. There's four, and let's go to six. I'm gonna make this on setting six. Okay, so I have to roll with my left hand, drape this, <laughs> this long strip over whatever is over there. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Here we go. Boink. All right, so this is plenty long. Now, I could have rolled it up when it was um, thicker. <laughs> That's the word I'm looking for, thicker. But, you know, I wanted the revolutions. I wanted the, the gradation from the center to the perimeter to be a little bit finer. Now this, I, I don't remember what setting this was. You can see the revolutions. That doesn't really bother me and it's not gonna make any difference in this case. Okay, so let us roll up really tightly from this edge. Try not to get any air in there. And just roll straight down. Now there's quite a bit of blue in the center. There is. I admit it. There's going to be quite a bit of blue in that center. But it's not, I do not believe it's going to make that much difference. For this particular thing I'm making. And you know, if I decide to make earrings like I did with this one, it'll be quite nice even with the, uh, the blue center. Okay, so let's just finish this up. Doink. All right. Hmm. Let me just try to cut some of this off at the end. I want to get to the point where I have a full slice or very close to a full slice. Got a little bit of a space in there. Let's cut the other end. Oops. Try always to cut with the right side of the blade. Okay. Now, dun -ba -dun -ba -dun. now this one had the black over, and I want you to take a close look because the way we do this, see how thin the black got? It's not really black here. It, it looks like a very mm, sort of a browny black because you're seeing this through the black. And that is probably going to happen. Now, when we do things like carving, remember the cat pin and the, the fish pins and stuff, we start with very specific pasta machine settings that give us a uniform thickness to carve through. This is a slightly different situation. This is different. I can't really predict how thick or thin 
this is this uh, either black or whatever color. Now I'm gonna try white. <laughs> and I wanna try white because I have some pods, poppy seed pods, and they almost look like they're violets and blues underneath this kind of dusty white, okay? I don't know if it's gonna look anything like what I wanted to, but hey, why not give it a try? Why not? All right, so you know what? I'm gonna make this bigger around. I'm gonna increase the diameter of this baby. Just by pushing the ends like that. I'm pushing it. I think that's also gonna help me close that hole in the middle. Right. Okay, so let me prepare for the next step, which is to take this and make the pod. As I said, we're going to use white instead of black. White might not be the most practical thing for a ring. I think black is probably a lot more practical for a ring, but I want to see what happens. So that's what we're going to do. So here is my scrap clay. I'm just going to roll it up into a nice cylinder, tight. Okay. Now, this is going to be the core, what's underneath the carving sheet, okay? So let us begin there. Let's just see how much clay this is. Now, whatever I do here, this is the smallest it's ever going to be. <laughs> It only gets bigger from here. So bear that in mind. If you want something very large, then start with something very large. If you're a little concerned about things getting too big on you, then make sure you don't have too big a core. Okay. Just going to roll the ball like so. Let's make it nice and round. Mm -hmm. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, so some of you might be thinking, now why is she rolling a ball instead of rolling a cylinder and covering it with, you know, a Skinner blend uh, strip or something like that? Well, you'll see why <laughs> when we start our shaping. Okay, so I'm just trying to... Get out of here, you. All right. So I think this ball is going to be about the same size as this one. By the time I put uh, the carving sheet over it, I do believe. I do believe. Now, do I want it tinier? Hmm. I kind of like this, doing a doing like that. One of the nicest things about using rubber cord is that it does kind of stick to you. So this isn't, although it moves freely, it doesn't move as freely as it would if it were a loose metal band. Loose metal band. I wonder if Metallica was a loose metal band. All right, so let us begin by taking and cutting a rather thick piece. Now, how thick is thick? Today, thick is this, which appears to be, uh, I can even do this for real. It appears to be four and a half, maybe five millimeter. Okay, let's make that round. Okay, now I'm going to take this, and I rolled this through setting number six on my pasta machine. I am going to roll this, this through setting number seven. Maybe I'll go to eight. Hmm. Actually, I think that looks good. Okay, so let's talk about 
in general, what is happening here? If I cut this, let's say I had cut this at two millimeters, then I would want this sheet that is going to go on one side to be very, very thin. Okay? Because if I had cut it two millimeters, there is a limitation as to how thin I could make that two millimeter piece. There is. I mean, it just gets to the point where, you know, if I needed extra size, if I wanted to make it big, I would be stretching it and thinning it out to the point where it would be so thin. Now, see, I want this a little bit thick because I do have to spread it out. And as I work it on this ball, it's going to keep getting thinner because as you work on the ball, you're increasing the surface area. And as you increase the surface area, both sheets are getting thinner, the top and the bottom. I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, I'm staying at setting number, number seven. Did I say seven? Yeah, I think I did. I think I said seven. Should I go to eight? Hmm. I don't know. It's a mystery. I'm sticking with this. Maybe I'll thin it by hand. Just a tad. Just a little bit. Just a bit. Let's just put that right on top. Like so. Well, I could have done a better job at this. I should have just cut a disc. Oh, look at look at the schmutz. Look at the schmutz. I got schmutz. All right. Now I'm gonna thin the edge by kind of pulling the white over like that. Okay. Like so. Mm -hmm. Just a bit. Just a little bit. Like that. Now, let us take this and put it on here. Mm hmm. I am. I am. Okay, so let's get back to that question because there would have been another way that under certain circumstances and instances, I might have actually taken a Skinner bone strip, wrapped it around a cylinder, closed the ends, and pulled them up. Well, if you look at this, this tip is really kind of nice looking. You don't see any extra black or any folds where I carved or any of that jazz going on. Because whenever you take and you pinch and you pull the sides up, you're not pulling them up evenly. You're just trying to cover them. But the focus is not going to be on the ends that you're covering. The focus in this point is right here on the end, on the point. And so I want to make sure that that point is nice. <laughs> is nice, yeah. Got to, okay? All right. So at this point, it's not big enough. Uh-oh. Well, that's okay because I'm just going to keep pushing the scrap clay in and pulling the white and, oops, dang, <laughs> I am such a slob. Oh, see, that's one of the hazards of working with black when you are me. 
I mean, working with white. Excuse me, I can't even. I can't even talk today. Okay. Dad, gum it. I may have to paint that after I'm done. Just to cover it up. But you see what's happening here now. Remember how it was big and round in the back? Not so big and round anymore. So I'm going to keep doing just that. Pulling the top over the bottom. Like this. Okay. And as I'm doing this, what am I doing? I'm increasing the surface area of this blue and lavender and white clay. That is exactly what I'm doing. Okay, now I might be able to move some of that from the tip even. Even. Down. Like so. And then maybe turn it over and start pulling that white clay around that scrap like so. <laughs> All right. Okay, so the base is not as important, obviously, as the tip in this case. So I'm just going to try to pull that white clay around the scrap. Yeah, I can do it. I'm doing it, see? So it just takes a little bit of manipulation, but it's easy to do. The clay feels really good. make it, well, let's just start pulling it in like that. Yeah, why not? Okay, so I don't know if you have to watch me do the whole thing, but we're getting there. Look, see, it looks like I'm making a little bowl or something. So I'm just going to keep working it like this. All right. So I'm going to cut here and I'll be back when I have reduced the size of this opening by half. Okay, half. Approximately half. So let's just start closing it in by pushing like so. Mm -hmm. Sorry if I ran off camera. I'm going to try to be better this year about that. There are no guarantees. None. Okay. That looks good. That looks bad. All right. So there is the beginning of the potty thing. All right. Now let's start pulling out the point. And to do that, I'm just going to, well, here, let's look at it from this perspective. I'm just going to elongate it a bit. Okay, so there's a little elongation there just by pressing on the sides. And that will make it easier to start drawing up a point. It'd be a lot more difficult if I, if this was like, round. You got nothing to pull or hold on to. But in this case, I can start drawing a point up out of the top, like so. See? Yep. There we go. Now, if you draw too much out, if you make it too long, it's pretty simple just to push it back in and make it short and plump again. See, 
You just put your thumb and then you just pinch the top and push it back down. None of this is too terribly difficult. All right. Okay, so shall I make a pod like this guy where it's sort of like boing, 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 like that? Okay, I will. All right, so I'm going to begin with this long needle. I think it's for dolls. So let's mark at the bottom. I want that. Then I want, let us say that. Then maybe that. And that. So that's kind of the easiest way to mark, right? Like fives are hard. <laughs> Five would be harder. Yeah. I like five though. So let's just like so. Okay, let's do these guys. Just aim the tip at the tip. Okay, I think you guys got it. Da, 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 da. All right. Are they perfect? Nope. Okay, so that's the beginning. Now, what I'm going to do is I would like to make these, I would like to make this deeper. What it is, is it looks like it's round, but then I've cut these channels in. But they're not really nicely brought up like that. And so I think I'm going to have to make the channels deeper for that to happen. Okay, so I will do that. Actually, I'm going to stop now and let's try to draw them up a bit. Now, sometimes it's hard because you can't get your fingers in certain places. So I happen to have this and it's kind of a nice one because I have a pipe cutter or tube cutter, excuse me, a pipe cutter, a tube cutter. And whenever I cut, it sort of draws the sides in and rounds them. So that's kind of a nice thing because I can take and roll a new fresh piece of clay right down in there. I don't know why it's so hard for me to keep things clean. Just to say it's always kind of been that way with me. You know, clean your room. No. I want to go play baseball, Mom.
I didn't really play with dolls. Always. I was a tomboy. A tomboy. Okay, so I think you can see what's happening here. I'm just rolling. You see the difference between this one and this one? See? So that is what I'm going to do next. You deepen first, and then you take a tool, something like this, and you just carefully roll and push the clay from the channel up, just moving it. I can't believe I'm such a slob. Yep, I can. All right, I'll be back when I'm done. So I did the shaping on each of the, the uh, sections. Now I'm just taking a clean brush. I'm just gonna go over the whole thing. I tried a little patch job here. It did not work out too well. Let's we'll see. We'll see. Okay, here we go. Now I'm going to put a black base on this pot. And I'll do black because the, um, the cord is black like that. Okay, so let me just finish this part. Not perfect, but not too terribly bad. Okay, so I will be back. I'm gonna prepare this. Uh, that should, I would say that much should be enough for the bottom. I'll be back. Actually, I'm just going to take some black clay and roll it through the thickest setting in my pasta machine. Yeah, that was like why am I making this harder than it should be? I don't know. Sometimes it happens. Okay. Actually, this is setting number two. I'm going to texture it, rolling it through the same setting with this sponge. Dun, 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 dun. That's a good size. Mm -hmm. Might be just a tad large. Just, ah, uh, just an, an itty bitty. Ideally, well, that's not ideal. Let me see, is this a better size? Uh, da, 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 da. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, the one thing that's happening here, though, is that there is an air pocket. I know there's an air pocket there. I would very much like to get rid of it. Or do something with it. I think what I'm going to do, though, because I know it's there, is I'm going to put this on, and then I am going to poke a hole through the middle. So make a little air vent like that. 
Now, this guy's going to sit higher on the hand. So I think maybe this would be better off not on this finger, which would allow it to move all the way around, but perhaps here or here, like that. Okay. Let's soften that edge a bit. And then this guy's going in the oven. Yep. Now, if you're using a clay that's a lot softer than Kato Bali clay, you might want to do this part, what I'm doing, <laughs> and then do your shaping. Okay, here we go. Not too bad. Let me restore that hole like that. And now we're going in the oven. All right, so this is cured. It is time to start carving. I am using a very, very, very fine, maybe one millimeter V gouge. Now, sometimes it's hard to see whether it's a V or a U. The best and easiest way is just to take raw clay and make an impression. See, it's clearly a V. All right, so I start at the tip. So I will just make one short cut like so in each one. And as I'm looking at this white pod, I realize why I make black ones. <laughs> this is kind of dirty. Mm, I haven't exactly decided what, if anything, I can do about that. Okay, so now each one of these sections has one. Now the next row is just to, the, to each side. Okay. like so. All right, so each one, then in the next row we'll have two, and then three, and then I just go in rows. See, so you see the one there, the two. Ah, the next row had four. And because they're different sizes, they won't all have the same number of cuts. Just play it by ear, but uh, I find it easier try, just to try to maintain the rows. Like so, okay. This is a simple pattern. If you're inexperienced or new to carving, it's really a good one to start with. Okay, so let me finish this up, and then I'll be back. Um, let's see whether I can sort of carve to help myself in spots like that, and like that. So let's see. All right. This looks like a head of garlic. Mm. Oh, well. Okay, so the garlic, I mean the pod, is carved. It looks like garlic. You know, Gilroy, California has the National Garlic Festival. And, uh, you know, you can make garlic rings and go and sell them at the garlic festival. I, I have to admit, I like the black one so much more. But I had to try, right? You have to try. I didn't really think it was going to look this much like garlic, but it does look like garlic. It's a garlic ring. It's not a pod. It's a garlic ring. All right. So now it's time to turn our garlic into a ring. And the way that's done is by drilling two holes right there like that. And then putting 
or cord through. Now, this is three millimeter cord. Thing is, if possible, you want to angle these holes in that way. Just this angle is fine. It could probably be a little steeper, like sticking out a little more like that. Because look what happens when you put it on. See how it's pinching my finger like that? Like that. Uh, but you know, it's actually fine. This way is just fine. Okay, so here's that. Now, what I need to do is I need to make a pilot hole. And then I need to drill some holes. Yeah, I do. I need to drill holes. And I need to drill them using my various hand drills. I have so many. <laughs> so many hand drills. Okay. This poor little drill. <laughs> it's got glue on it. It's missing an end. But it's a really good one to start. Okie dokie. Let's make our holes. I'm going to put one hole here. And then one hole. Let's put it here. Remember, I'm going to try to drill this way. Not upright like this, but at an angle like that. Same on this side, not straight upright like this. The path will be angled like that. Okay. Now I'm going to take this drill, my poor little ratty drill. And just slowly drill at an angle like that so you can see the angle. I'm drilling at. Okay, good deal. Now let's do the same thing on the other side. <laughs> Okie dokie. Come on, get in there. Now, I ran into the space the space I did there's a space in there yes there is I'm going to try to get down as far as I can okay Okay, here we go. Now, where is that great big drill? I oh, have like a Shuma. This one. This guy is the one I need for that. But, you know, I'm not going to drill immediately there. I'm going to do some intermediate size drilling. Okay. And just start it slow. I made this drill and the bit is actually turning, which makes it far from ideal. So far from ideal, you can't even believe how far from ideal it is. All right. You know, I think I've angled this one too much. So I'm gonna try to correct this by drilling more straight down. Sometimes you can do that. It, it just feels like it's too angled too deep that way. So let me see if I can adjust the angle so I'm drilling more straight and less. Okay. I think I can do that. Okay. Now, how are you? How's this guy? I'd kind of like to do the same thing with this side too. Make it just a little more upright. 
when it's angled too steeply. Now, one thing I do not like, see all these little chips? Chip, chip, chip. I'm feeling like the clay is not cured enough. Now, maybe my oven wasn't quite hot enough. These puppies are going back in the oven. If you see this kind of thing happening, these little chip, chip, chip pieces like that, it's not good. It's not completely cured. Now, because this is Kato white, it is going to yellow more. Uh, I'm not concerned about that. I want this cured, okay? So uh, let me get that done, and then I'll be back. Okay, so it's time to take our garlic and turn it into a ring. Yeah, okie dokie. So you can see this one. I like this one so much better. And then this guy. And I am going to use the three millimeter cord. So now I have to finish drilling the holes. This is nice and cured now. I think part of the reason why it wasn't completely cured is that, you know, I sat it like this in baking soda. So the baking soda was kind of covering the bottom. Yes, it was. Hi, Lou. Yep. There we go. So that's a good start. It still has that really crumbly kind of thing happening. But I did cure it again. I did. I did. Louie, are you okay? I mean, maybe these are, let me see it. I can't even really get a good grip. Hmm. I don't know what to say. I guess I could put it back in the oven. But the other pieces that I have been curing have been fine, so. What can I say? Nothing. I can say nothing. It's a mystery. <laughs> okay, let's get it going there. Let's get it going there. It sounds cured. All right, let me cut a little piece. Let's just see something. This is way too long. Yes, that's way too long. That's even too long for this finger. This chubby finger. Okay, so first I'm going to begin by cutting, making an angled cut. Let's just see if I can do a better job determining exactly how long this should be. I know this is too long. Let me just cut, cut it just a bit. Like so. Stick it back in there and see what's happening. I wasn't going to put it on that finger anyway. And it's a little bit loose for me on that finger. Let me cut a bit more off and of course because the cord itself does stretch even if I cut it and it is just a tad too short it will be fine once it's glued in okay so that's good that's good get all this this, <laughs> this these little bits I'm gonna get rid of them they're everywhere all right, so let us glue one end in. Just gonna take my glue and let me clean this tip. I'm having a hard time even seeing what I'm doing. Come on. Well, I did the best I could. I'm gonna put a lot of glue down in there. Okay, there you 
go. I can't tell if I got any glue at all in there. You know, these packages are quite large, but, uh, you know, that looks like there's a ton of glue in there. I don't think there's a ton. I just don't, but I know that there's glue there because I got a little on my... on this. All right, let's give it a go again. So I think you guys know, probably, I really like rings and I like to make rings. I've made a lot of polymer rings in my many years working with polymer clay. Most of the rings I make, I have to admit, are all clay or I have stainless bands that I cover. And you know what, if you're making rings to sell, you probably want to use something like the stainless bands because they are set at specific sizes, which might make it easier for you to sell your, sell your rings. Someone can actually order a specific size and you can, you'll be assured that what you send will be that size. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so there's my, <laughs> there's my blue garlic, blue garlic. It's kind of cute. I like that one better, but it is kind of cute. Okay, so I'm going to let that cure before I fiddle with it and try to put it on again. Now, here's another thing you can do. It's quite simple. And, you know, I have, I have bags that look like this. See all these things? All this stuff. You know, parts and pieces of things I was making. And of course, I made way more than I needed, because I always do. And so I thought, well, why not just make a couple little rings? And these were quite simple. Now, all you're going to have to do is take your disc or whatever it is. You just have to make sure that there's enough clay to drill into and secure your cord. And that's why underneath this square on top, there's a thick pad of clay, and that's what I have drilled into, see? And then just glued, and they're really, they're cute. Why not? Woohoo! Okay, here's a green one. This one I like. I like this one a lot. Anyway, so there's another thing that you might you might do with some of your pieces, your stray things that you've made. Just turn them into rings. Mm -hmm. Even the flat ones, flat pieces like these discs. Excellent. Okay. I'll be back. Okay, so the glue is dried. And here is my little blue and violet garlic clove carved garlic clove i really wanted to make a pot but you know what i think i'm gonna do is the same thing but i'm gonna reverse it next time yeah i'm gonna make the pod this way said so actually that would be very difficult to mount as a ring if it was like this i don't know let me think about it but certainly i like it i, I think i would like it this way then it wouldn't look so much like garlic this looks like garlic but if you turn it kind of like that, it, it doesn't look quite as much like garlic, maybe? Whatever, I like garlic. Okay. So here's the ring. Here's another ring. And then here are these guys. Yeah, these. I'm going to, you know what? I think I'm going to make a lot of rings. Because I have, I like these. I like them a lot. And they got a little bit misshapen. You know, they're not totally perfectly dished. But that doesn't even really bother me. I like them. I like them, I like them, I like them a lot. Okay, so that is it for this class. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you make a lot of rings. You know, it doesn't have to be difficult. It doesn't have to be... Um, complicated, can be just as simple as what we did today. And it could be simpler. You could decide that you just want to take a bead, something like this. Look, this is just a bead. It's just an old, and this is really old, but you can see that it is nothing but a bead. 
well, it was a ball. It wasn't technically a bead, I guess. And I drilled two holes like this, put a little bit of cord in, and I've got a little ring, like so. So, something else for you to do with your clay. Oh. Okay, well, thank you so much for uh, watching. If you're not, if you haven't subscribed, please do. Think about joining the uh, members' classroom as well. We do a lot of fun stuff there, a lot of more difficult things, and uh, it's such a nice group of people. You'll like it. Okay, so that's it for me. I'm Donna Cato, signing off. Bye.